Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the panel today. It's a pleasure to share the stage with brilliant colleagues and an honor to follow Mr. Cookson, whom I congratulate for the important award he has received yesterday. What I want to talk about today is a misunderstanding between science and society that pervades all media communication. Just like all of you, I am currently concerned about the ongoing pandemic. So I watch the news, I try to stay informed, and I pick up clues that to me reveal this misunderstanding between science and society. A misunderstanding that is not obvious, that is hidden between the lines. And why it matters is because this misunderstanding does not help the conversation, does not help us move forward. Some examples. About a month ago, I was watching CNN on YouTube and I stumbled on a few clips that were good examples of what I'm talking about. The clips are all about COVID-19, but I think that we have seen this misunderstanding before and we'll see it again. So I think that COVID-19 is just what we live through now. What is this misunderstanding exactly? Well, better people than I have tried to elaborate this idea in it more than 10 minutes, but here's my condensed version. Science does not tell you what to do. Science does not tell you how to behave in the world. Science is about learning what the universe is made of, and that's why facts are so central in science. Science is about the what, it's objective. But we as humans, we look at the world as a stage for action. Things are not neutral to us. They are a potential tool or a threat. And we scan the environment in an instrumental way. So we are purpose driven and we need to know what to do. This is not the question what, that's beyond the question what, it's so what. Science is one of the ways in which we produce knowledge that we use to navigate reality. Science is one of the sources of knowledge that inform our lives. Politicians and policymakers should absolutely be informed about the science, but then they need to come up with a plan or policy that considers other factors of social relevance to the point that they might slightly disregard or go against what the science says or oftentimes just feel the gap because science does not tell us everything. There's much we don't know about this virus yet, but politicians cannot wait for us to get there. They need to act now. So they take decisions with incomplete data by definition. Many think that science is this source of truth that we can interrogate like an oracle, and then we will know what to do. So we expect science to give us solutions to questions that require a decision. A big one, should we reopen schools in September? Science informs this decision, but it does not have an answer to the question. Science does not tell us what to do. Politicians and policymakers need to take the responsibility to make a decision, an informed decision, and it will be them who will be held responsible, not science. Science, or rather scientists, have their own responsibilities, but to each their own. Let's not dump the politicians' incompetence on science. Speaking of politicians, the first clip I'm going to show you today was published on the CNN YouTube channel on July 31st. Now, I edited the clip that I'm going to show today slightly um, because I need to fit my time but I encourage you to watch them on the CNN YouTube channel because they are available uh, online, of course. So give me please a sign if you uh, see here and see this correctly. This is about science. It's what the doctors tell us uh, that we need to do. It's not what I say so that I can come on a show and say I, I, I called for testing. I hope you saw that. Yeah? Okay. It's a very short clip, just Nancy Pelosi saying, this is not what I want. This is what science tells us to do. Now, I think that she's speaking in good faith. I don't think of Nancy Pelosi as someone trying to hide away from the responsibility to take a decision for the people. 
I genuinely think that she does the good thing if she obeys what the scientists say. There might be reasons for this, but bottom line, this is what I hear in this clip. And the point is failing to understand this crucial division of roles, differentiation of, of roles. And just in case, if you think I'm nitpicking and that it's ambiguous what she says, yes, it may be, but I still think that this ambiguity points in the direction of my way of reading the situation. And if anything, I say clarity would sound differently in her words. Now, don't get me wrong, there's many people that will use science to hide uh, they're behind a responsibility they don't want to take, avoiding saying, this is my interpretation. As we all know, data don't speak, so data will never say anything, and data does not suggest. We do. Now, the second clip I'm going to show you is one that I really urge you to watch in its entirety. That would be five minutes, and I cut it down to 45 seconds today. You can break down every word of the five minutes and write an essay about this video. So sexy superstar Dr. Anthony Fauci is testifying before Congressman Jim Jordan, who keeps asking him, should we limit the protesting? Does the protesting increase the spread of the virus? The protesting he's talking about is obviously the one that we uh, still see happening in the US now a month from uh, when the clip dates because it was published on the CNN YouTube channel on July 31st. Here it is. Should we limit the protesting? I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. It's a simple question, doctor. Should we limit the protest? Well, I'm not gonna opine on limiting anything. I'm telling you what it is, the danger. And you can make your own conclusion about that. Do you see the inconsistency though, Dr. Fauci? There's no inconsistency, Congressman. I don't understand what you're asking me as a public health official. Well, I just want an answer to the question. Do the protests increase the spread of the virus? I, I don't have any scientific evidence that anything I can tell you that crowds are known to increase the acquisition and transmission. No matter so what So you don't the have a position is. on whether the protests increase the spread of the virus or don't increase the spread of the virus? All right. So you shouldn't really watch this clip uh, entirely because the misunderstanding iterated is phenomenal. For five minutes, Jim Jordan keeps insisting on the same question and Fauci, he says the right things, but I don't think he's doing a good job at defending himself and science because he represents science there. He even gets to the point of admitting, I don't have scientific evidence of protesting a particular form of public gathering that it increases the spread of the virus. And that's a defeat in this exchange. He iterates that he cannot tell the government what to do, but Mr. Jordan is deaf to that. He kept grilling him because I think that he also speaks in good faith out of ignorance, but he does not realize that he's making a fool of himself by asking that question so many times. It's, the, it's not the wrong question. He's asking the wrong person. Fauci is obstinate in denying the answer, making it seem, though, that he does not want to give the answer, as if he doesn't want to expose himself, like all the I don't recall the positions, because that's standard. And I think that he comes across like those people here. So he says the right things, but they're not enough here, because Mr. Jordan does not understand what Fauci means, and he is aggressive. So I think that the misunderstanding here is obvious, but that Fauci should have explained the flowers and the bees to Mr. Jordan. So why it's not up to him to have a position on those things. Just before I conclude, I would uh, like to pull up one more slide here um, with the references to the two clips that I just showed. You can take a screenshot or a picture, I guess. And the reference to my YouTube channel, because I would like to mention that besides my podcast, I have recently been doing other interviews, uh, in particular these three on COVID-19, two of which were the same biomathematician, Maira Aguiar, and one we just recorded yesterday. So it's not up yet. What is the R number? And I want to keep working on this. So why I show you is not because I think it's 
I'm not the BBC, like the, this is great science communication, but at least if I'm critical of other media, I also expose myself and I talk to talk and walk the walk. So to conclude, I will try to answer a question expressed in the panel summary. How can we ensure that study results are more effectively interpreted and conveyed to the population? Well, my opinion is that it's rarely about the results. It's a misunderstanding of what we expect from science. So the results are correctly presented, but the interviewer or journalist will ask, so what, to a scientist who cannot follow up, provided that it's scientists who should do this type of communication. Maybe we need science communicators as a specific professional figure. In fact, I also take issue with this pressure on researchers and young researchers to communicate their science. But we get the sentiment of frustration for not getting enough answers. And scientists come across as being either incompetent or coward. And I find that science is vilified for failing to give the answers that we should give, we humans, and not the data. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Federica.